I am typically sharing my thrifty home decorating thrift hauls, just ways that our family saves money <laughs> decorating and DIYing our home. But something that I also do a lot of is cooking on a budget. So I wanted to share some of my go-to meals that we enjoy year round, but specifically for the fall, some cozy meals. So all of these are budget friendly. We are a family of four living on a single income. I aim to spend about 100 to $120 per week on our grocery bill. So all of these are thrifty meals, but none of them are pasta. <laughs> because I feel like that is so overdone and we get sick of pasta real quick. So these are meals that are just my go-to standard for a few reasons. They are budget friendly, they don't require a ton of dishes, <laughs> and I don't have to measure everything for most of them. So I try to lean towards as many <laughs> whole foods as possible. I definitely use shortcuts when I can because this mama's got a lot to do. So if that sounds like the way you like to cook, <laughs> then I hope this can be inspiring and let's get cooking. So we are starting off with a very versatile dinner, which actually fed my family for a whole week in different renditions. And this was to use up this chicken that I had cooked in the crock pot with taco seasoning and a jar of salsa. It really is that easy. I purposely made way too much of this for a little party that we had. And so I was able to throw a lot of it into the freezer. To reheat this, I like to put it into my cast iron skillet. And this time I added some black beans into here to help spread the more expensive protein of the meat. I added just a bit more taco seasoning on top of this because those beans weren't seasoned at all. And then something that I have learned from the Mexican family that I have married into is how good cucumbers are on top of tacos, specifically chicken tacos, since they typically lack a little bit of that crunch and they need a little bit of acid. So I added these and some cherry tomatoes into a Tupperware and then squeezed some lime juice and salt on top of these. And then I moved on to our tortillas. Now I used to only like flour tortillas, but now I have really started to like corn tortillas is also because of my my family and what I've noticed is crucial with corn tortillas is frying them in a little bit of oil and making sure that they get a little bit brown so that they have a good flavor and that they also don't fall apart so here I'm making a few quesadillas for the boys since they're not the biggest fan of tacos yet at this age and then I just toasted up a few of the tortillas for Dominic and I and now what I'm adding is an apple this will actually be part of the tacos. So this was delicious. I love using ingredients that are readily available for the season and typically apples are cheaper during this season. So we've been using them a whole lot and buying them every week. So I chopped these up into kind of like sticks and then I covered them in lemon juice. You could also use lime juice and then shook those up so that they wouldn't brown. And then it was time to start assembling the tacos and I also had on hand some pickled onions which are amazing they are so good on pretty much anything I love to have these on hand and I do make them myself I will share with you all the Instagram profile of my friend who shared the recipe with me and these have maple syrup in them which I think is another good ode to fall we ended up packing these up in Tupperware I love this type of Tupperware that we have here I'll link these down below because we use these for picnics in the schools lunches for Gideon and then we actually took these out to the beach while well, it was a park next to the beach because we didn't want to get too much sand in our food and we had a lovely fall Florida picnic out here and it was just a beautiful night. We had different renditions of this meal pretty much all week to use up that meat. So we had some burrito bowls and then one that I just wanted to mention because I thought it was pretty unique was creating grilled cheese with that chicken. And then I put some mango chutney that we got at the farmer's market in there. 
I'm using some of my homemade sourdough bread, which is a great way that we have been saving money this fall and will come back in a few other recipes, but you could always use any store-bought bread as well. We had this as well as a picnic outside because it is so, so lovely here in Florida. We are finally getting to actually be outside. So let's move on to our next recipe. And this one is one of my all-time favorites. I've been making this for years. I have modified the recipe just a little bit, but it has has one kind of secret ingredient in it that really makes the dish come together. So you're going to start with five eggs into here. This is a great way to get lots of protein. I sometimes make this, well, I often make this for Dominic so that he can grab eggs before in the morning so that I don't have to cook eggs every single morning. And so this is the secret ingredient that you're gonna add after a half cup of milk. You're going to add a half cup of mayonnaise. Yes, that might be kind of gross to some of you all, but uh, trust me, it is so, so good. And you, will, you would never be able to guess that it's in there. I love recipes like this that I can completely memorize that just use very few instruments to wash <laughs> because that makes this mama's job a lot easier. So one of the easy things that you don't even have to measure is it takes an entire bag of cheese, an eight ounce bag of cheese. And I used cheddar cheese for this one because that's my kid's favorite, but I have done it before with mozzarella and spinach, and that one is really, really good. I've also done it with onions, and you could really just put anything that you have in there. Bell peppers, anything would be really, really good. So you can just put the pie crust that is from the store right into the dish, but this time I wanted to make it a little bit more complicated, a little more aesthetic for fall. So I cut around the perimeter so that I would have a little bit extra. So I returned this center part to the pie pan and then using that extra that I cut out from around the perimeter, I used this tiny little leaf cutter thing that I have. I can link this set below, but it was part of a large set that I used for my kids in an attempt to get them to eat vegetables in different shapes <laughs> but they actually that actually did work so if you're a parent that needs a little hack there's my hack for you and i'll link it down below but i used these little leaves all around the perimeter to make this really really beautiful and have a little bit of an extra fault i don't think i showed it but i also added a little bit of salt and pepper into this and then this is covered in foil and into the oven at 400 degrees for 45 minutes until you remove that foil and finish it up for another 10 and it turns out so beautifully and this we just pop right into the fridge and my husband cuts a piece out and has it for breakfast each morning lasts him about a few days the next recipe that we're going on to is a tiki masala that my kids love they always eat this and so these are the things that i add in addition to it this is really one of those just like dump and go recipes which we all need so i added a green bell pepper to this whenever i make this recipe i always try to have a large volume pretty much the largest that my instant pot or my Dutch oven can handle so that I can pop a portion in the fridge for the following night's dinner as well as a portion in the freezer. So in addition to that green bell pepper, I also do a lot of onion. I, I did two onions for the amounts that I was making tonight. And then I also add garlic to this after this has simmered a little bit. I did add the chicken in first on the saute function of my Instant Pot. And you could do the exact same thing in your Dutch oven or just a big pan on the stove. I happen to have one tomato. <laughs> the other one was a little bit, didn't look so good. So I chopped up this tomato as well. And really you could add a lot of things in here. I really love recipes that are super versatile and this is one of them. So some things that I've added before are some potatoes as well as some chopped up carrots in here. I was also thinking maybe you could do some eggplant if you had a surplus of eggplant laying around. I know a lot of people who garden tend to have a surplus of eggplant. And then this is when I added that garlic. I put about five cloves of garlic in there because we love garlic for the health and flavor benefits of it. I like to have my Instant Pot set on the saute function while I'm adding all of these ingredients just to really open up their flavor. I don't know. 
know, I read that online somewhere and so now I do that. I added a little bit of tomato paste since my tiki masala sauce was not meant for this amount of volume. And then I also added some chickpeas to help add a little bit more protein. This tiki masala sauce is the one that I got at our local grocery store at Publix if you're from the South. But the cheapest version that I have found that is also delicious is from Aldi. I added a little bit more paprika just because the volume of my add-ins were a lot more than they suggested on the jar. I also added some pepper to give it some more flavor and then to break down the heat a little bit because I like to get the medium heat to give it lots and lots of flavor. I'm adding some Greek yogurt, just plain Greek yogurt. And then after this is done cooking, I will add a jar of coconut milk to really help this be nice and creamy and not too spicy for ourselves or mostly for our kids. While this cooked for 15 minutes in my Instant Pot at high pressure, we are moving on to make some naan. I also got some jasmine rice started in our rice cooker, but I didn't bother showing that. But this naan recipe is so good, so easy. I have made naan a bunch of different ways with my sourdough starter or with yeast, but this one is actually just Greek yogurt, flour, and baking powder if you don't have the self-rising flour, which I didn't. But it adds a little bit of extra protein since it has that Greek yogurt in it. Now, I messed up this time because I didn't realize that I had accidentally purchased normal yogurt instead of Greek yogurt, so it definitely had a lot more water content than normal. So I will definitely link the recipe down below. This is me realizing that I had purchased the wrong type of yogurt. It was buy one, get one. <laughs> That's why I purchased it. But what pretty much happened is I just needed to add a lot of extra flour to help, I think, like compensate for the added water content in it. So you're going to <laughs> create a dough consistency with this, and then you want to knead it a whole lot to help it come together and get lots of air in it. And then you're going to form it into little balls, and then these balls Balls rolled out and go into the frying pan and it really is that easy I do like to add a good amount of butter in the pan before adding the dough in there that really gives it a good flavor and then I keep the pan really hot if you don't do this they end up getting a little bit pale and they don't get as bubbly but to keeping the pan really hot and then keeping a close eye on them so you don't burn them, you'll get these nice bubbles before you flip it over. I have a hard time getting these actually to the dinner table because my boys love to steal them and eat them, all of them, dad included. So once the Instant Pot was ready, I went ahead and added the coconut milk into here. This really does give it such a good creamy flavor. The boys were carving a pumpkin outside with Dominic and they added cinnamon onto the inside of it which was so so nice it made our front porch smell so good so there's a little tip for you all i know it's past halloween now so <laughs> for next year and i did want to mention that i actually ended up adding some garlic powder into these and i think that gave it a really nice flavor i wasn't sure if my boys would like that so i only did it onto the last few of them but they really enjoyed it either way and then i always use a roller to get these nice and flat that helps them get nice and evenly cooked. I served this with limes, which were delicious on here, as well as fresh chives from our backyard on top of the jasmine rice. And it was delicious for two nights in a row and another meal in the freezer. So we are moving along to another breakfast item. Again, this is a super easy one that can use up lots of random things that you have in your fridge. And I will link this one as well as all of the other other recipes that I have found down below. So this is a sourdough strata and I'm using up some leftover pieces of sourdough that we just never got to and were hanging out in the fridge. So I cubed these up and put these into the oven so that they could get a little bit toasty and started to cut up all of my vegetables. These are just things that I had in the fridge. The original recipe calls for sausage in here as well, which would be delicious, but we just didn't have any of that on hand. So I kept this as a 
vegetarian recipe with just eggs being the protein and then using up this bell pepper that I had left over in there as well as some red onion and then I'll add some spinach in there in a little bit. I did want to mention that you can use any bread leftover that you had. Um, I just have always a little bit of leftover sourdough since we just don't seem to ever finish a loaf in its entirety unless we're having company over but you're going to add a lot of eggs to this so the recipe calls for 10 eggs i find this just a little bit too much so i do nine eggs into here and then you're going to add two cups of milk into here i know this is going to seem like a lot of volume but that bread really does soak up a lot of this volume again with the easy recipe you're going to add most of that bag of cheese the eight ounce bag of cheese reserving just some for the top and and then whisk this all together. After about 15 minutes at 350 degrees, the bread should be nice and toasty. So I take that on out and dump it onto my cutting board, switching place with those veggies so that they can get sauteed a little bit. Everything is about to go into that skillet. So I add just a little bit of salt and pepper. You could add any seasonings you want. Then I add that toasted bread back into the cast iron skillet and mix this up a little bit with those veggies. This is also when I add in spinach if I have it and then it is time to pour the egg and milk mixture on top of all of this and top that with the remainder of the cheese. All right, this next one is one that you're going to want to double, maybe triple. I always regret not tripling it because how fast these get eaten and I love throwing these in the freezer for an easy snack or easy little dessert too because they pack some good nutrients in here. As you can see, I am grating up a zucchini, but they also are very sweet and delicious and really just taste like dessert. So these are high protein zucchini muffins. You're going to want to grate that zucchini, but make sure that you do not squeeze it. I did that once and it definitely made them a lot more dry. In a separate bowl, you're going to combine one cup of whole wheat flour is what the recipe says. I always just use white flour, one third cup of cocoa powder, a half cup of sugar, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one fourth teaspoon of salt. Then you're going to combine your wet ingredients. These are really where you get that protein from. So there is a half cup of whole milk Greek yogurt and one fourth cup of peanut butter in there, as well as one one egg and one teaspoon of vanilla and one third cup of milk. I doubled up the recipe for today and was able to get almost three dozen muffins out of this. I tend to make them a little bit smaller just so that the portion is better for my kids and myself because I could eat like four of these, honestly. These go into the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. You really want to make sure that you do not overcook them so that they don't get dry. I also pulled out a loaf of sourdough right before this. I will leave this recipe that I have because it has not failed me yet. These are all of the muffins that survived <laughs> before we ate them. You would think with the Greek yogurt and the zucchini and the peanut butter in there, they would be really dense, but as you can see, they are so nice. All right, guys, before I share our very last, very classic, fall recipe. I wanted to ask you guys to like this video if you enjoyed it. That really helps support the channel and my family through it. I also wanted to mention YouTube tells me a lot of information about you, <laughs> the viewer. Half of it, I don't even know what it means. But I recently found a spot where it shows me how many shares I've gotten in like a week. And I thought that was so cool because you guys actually share my videos, which is so touching. So I thought that this would be a great one to share since Everybody cooks, right? <laughs> and so if you found it inspirational or helpful, please share it with a friend, your mom, your daughter, your son, anyone who cooks. <laughs> All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoy this very last recipe and have a very blessed week. And for our very last cozy fall meal, we have a chili, but this chili has a little bit of a secret ingredient. A friend in my mom's group shared it, and I think we have all made this <laughs> separately, and we love it. So I will share what that secret ingredient is, and I so hope that you guys will try it. So of course, this starts with chopping up some garlic and some onions. Now, this is supposed to have meat in it, but I was stuck home with 
two sick little boys. And I thought that I had a pack of ground beef in the freezer, but I did not. But this turned out even delicious without it, but would be extra good with some ground beef in there. So the tomatoes that you're going to use are a can of fire roasted tomatoes, which makes it a little bit more flavorful, but that is not the secret ingredient yet. The recipe calls for a diced red onion. I also added to this a green onion, which I think gave it a really good depth of flavor and also gave it some green color, which for me is important to have a variety of colors in my food. The secret ingredient is actually in the spices. So the recipe calls for two tablespoons of chili powder and one and a half teaspoons of salt and a teaspoon of cinnamon. Yes, cinnamon. And we all agreed that this did something to this chili to make it extra special and delicious. And then on top of this, you're going to add a can of tomato sauce. I had this rather large can, but this worked out just fine as I added an extra can of beans to the two that the recipe called for to compensate for my lack of meat in this dish. And this turned out really, really good. It was not too spicy. And I topped ours with some Greek yogurt. We served it with some sourdough. It would also be great on top of rice and then of course lots of cheese on top because everything is better with cheese hello guys this has been the hardest decision in our kitchen remodel i am going to show you guys